yes, I'm going to do it at some point. Hello, hello, yeah, hello. Oh. hello, hello, hello. Hey, hey, Peter. Hello, everyone. Hey, how's that? <laughs> How's it and going? hello everyone out there. Welcome everybody to the Research VR podcast. We are live again in big screen. Let me let me get my hands out here. Um, in big screen and uh, where are we? Hey, and uh, we're here to talk a little bit about science again. That's one of our favorite exactly. things to do. And VR, VR and science, and kind of talk about how it works, what is on our mind. But oh, uh oh. Well, seems like our, my co-host teleported to a far-off seat, so this is going to be a solo yeah, show. I... No, 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 I'm, I'm back, I'm back. I, I don't want to... Uh... Oh, no, I'm moving the camera. <laughs> Such technical difficulties. I'm just, I, I'm just confused with foyer, you know. It's, it's not every time I'm you know, using this amazing immersive technology. Anyway, research true. and stuff. What's been happening? What's going on with Research VR? What are we going to talk about today? Well, let me pull up my yeah, screen. Agenda. Where is my screen? You you have it like it's projected. There, there it is. Yeah. Oh no, oh no! It's now grabbing the camera and the screen. Oh, this is a mess. Sorry. <laughs> this is. Oh my god. Ah, oh, big screen. This is so brain Big fun. screen VR. Yay. <laughs> oh my god. Sorry. Yeah, well, we 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 all know. Fix things. these things. Ooh, there it is. Ooh. Whoa. Fantastic. I have it behind and in front of me. Let me just check oh. that it looks decent. Oh, there we go. Bing! It does. You so, right now see what we see in another dimension. That's right. Yes. We were talking about NVIDIA's uh, SIGGRAPH findings and their very focal lenses. We didn't know much about them last week because they didn't really say much. Um, and then I found this no, video. they didn't for sure where they kind of talk about a little bit about the curved sunglasses, the hologram, and the laser. I, I think these names are slightly um, a little too simplistic, calling yes. something a hologram, which is a is essentially like a Fresnel glass. Um, yes. yes. They, and, and they talk about Ooh. their other thing, which is their very focal uh, lens, where you can see it kind of bending. And they essentially... They do nice. the same thing, which is create multiple um, planes of focus, focus, yeah, focus. Where here, essentially, it's the way they do that is um, light lasers that are being reflected off these curved sunglasses and then being projected onto the hologram. But mm -hmm. I, they didn't really go in deep into, into how it's very focal in terms of like being able to create multiple planes of focus but in their second thing well, this, okay this kind of shows you exactly how it works but they, well, those two weren't get the how same they thing can do it. okay that's strange because here i understand how with the lens shaping itself you can definitely reshape light and by doing some weird algorithms you know how you project the images on top of it mm -hmm. you definitely can do some magic but the previous one i don't get still <laughs> Um, yeah, well, we just wanted to clarify and uh, yeah. add in a little bit. They, this is actually a great yeah, talk. We, we'll link it for people. Um, yeah, 40 and, minutes, they might explain it. Yep. And I mean, well, the interesting part is actually they, the, the, teaker, the talker here goes into how they have right now the current rendering process has all these yeah. steps and in the, what, what we need to in, elimin, eliminate in these steps for us to get down to like almost zero late like basically zero latency uh tracking mm. and, and and everything that you'd want as well as the current resolution um he, he puts the he puts things in terms of megapixels like we're at 450 megapixels per mm. in, per eye and what we need to be at is a million um <laughs> so it's pretty interesting anyway this is a great well, talk it also we'll boils down to be honest, to megapixels or pixels per inch or per, uh, not inch, but per angle, right? Well, so, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, this is just the full, like, the full yeah. thing Yeah, is what he calls it. I'm trying to find the exact keyframe where he talks about it. Fascinating. Um, but yeah, really, really well done. Um, seems like NVIDIA is obviously like Whoa. thinking way far ahead. Um, you can look they forward are. as well into yeah, the camera, Peter, so people can see your lovely face in VR. Yes, definitely. <laughs> Hello. Hello, indeed. Um, 
Do they see me right now? No, I don't think yeah, so. Yeah, they can. They do. Let me. Oh, I need okay. to open up the chat on my phone so I can tell. Okay. Mm, so cool. it seems like we're live. It's quite interesting. Uh, um, point that you know nvidia as being someone who is majorly pushing towards innovation and having the hugest revenue they ever had is particularly helping the vr ecosystem grow as it seems this is exactly so what i was talking about in terms of yes. limits of human perspective perception yeah this is where we are modern vr 450 megapixels per second uh, i think being rendered yeah for, <laughs> per second and what we need to is not a million but a hundred thousand i am so bad yeah. with, with my scales but it's still a lot it it's really 100 is. times more well not 100 but 50 times more it's 200 1080p yeah. tvs essentially that are need to be projected to your eyes it's <laughs> a lot yeah um peter mm -hmm. what's going on here oh actually we want to talk a little bit about the the format of the show how we want to kind of go exactly and do these um we want to have a a particular topic per conversation Per conversation that we have yes. whether we have guests or not and um and then we'll probably talk a little bit about news not surrounding that particular exactly. topic so this week we'll talk about mobile ar um and where we mm -hmm. are what impact we think it's going to make yes. and is it any good but we also want to kind of talk talk about these things so let's get through these shorter stories first and then we'll dive into deeper into um yes. mobile ar perfect so let's start maybe with a short video and for the audience listening and not watching, I can describe what it have what it is. Um, oh, wait, are we doing the I'm right now? This one? Well, we can we can do that. Yeah, okay, we can do that. Then. So <laughs> what's Sorry. what you guys will see in the video, or you when you listen can imagine, imagine a plate full of small rubber balls or plastic balls because they said rubber is even louder. So this machine has a thread mill below it, and it has a lot of balls that you walk on top of it. Now it's a treadmill. It can rotate. It's a, basically a treadmill, yeah, but it can rotate the plate that the balls are kind of molded into because it tracks my body via the Kinect. And whenever I go left or right in VR, obviously, so I don't, uh, in the video, I'm not, <laughs> I'm walking fancy. It kind of corrects my walking. So I can walk in a circle, but I still always face the same direction. And it kind of moves me backward and forward, depending on whether I walk forward and backward. So and that, it's super loud. It's loud? <laughs> super exciting. Why? It's very loud. What what what's so loud uh, about it? The balls are making a noise, the as the motors, then the rattling of the balls, and also the friction. The interesting so, thing yeah, to note uh... is that there's actually I look I can see an actual treadmill underneath the balls yes. themselves, right? Yes. Interesting. It I mean it's yeah, cool it's that you're not wearing one. a hip. Oh, it's only forward. Well, this this, this treadmill itself only moves forward, but it <laughs> moves the rotating plate. Yeah, there I kind of overdid almost it. Fall. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I really overdid it. So the, the trick is you don't have to look at it. You really have to pretend you're really walking. That feels very natural. The moment you kind of try to think about the balls and look at them, it feels very confusing. So, so. But it's a one-directional treadmill that kind of moves the balls that are molded into a plate that itself rotates. Okay. And Sure, um, that describes. The but figures. but the question in everyone's mind is, can you turn or can you only walk forward? Yes, yes. No, you can, you can definitely turn. Whenever you turn, the platform turns with you. How so is it? Has the balls. So that's all based on the connect in terms of doing the yes. the body tracking exactly. and, and that's cool. And I I suggested them a lot of different tracking solutions, and he said that um, the Kinect has one advantage: it's very easy to use, and because I'm always front facing the Kinect. Yeah. They don't have a problem of occlusion on anything. It gives them a nice skeleton and it works. So mm. they don't need anything more sophisticated. What phase Obviously, there are some... What phase are they yeah. in? Like in terms of is this something that's just still a prototype? Okay, here comes a German story. The guys apparently are production guys and they are very focused on plastic. Apparently those guys, it's the whole business of them doing some plastic molds, and this seems to be a hobby project of them. So I have absolutely no idea whether it will launch or not, but they build it. They think it can be embedded into the floor of arcades, and obviously mm -hmm. it's slightly bigger and stuff. So it's apparently a passion project. Interesting. That's cool. That's, that's, oh, that's totally fair. One thing, one thing. <laughs> they have to get this both out when they have to transport it. So there was apparently the daughter of the guy sitting with a vacuum cleaner. So they made an extra adapter for the vacuum cleaner that sucks the balls in and then releases them. 
So literally, I have to get all the balls out before they remove it. So, or oh, transport funny. it. So it's it's a very Wait, it's a very each weird system. Ball by ball has yeah. to be removed. Yes, but they had like a special handle that or an adapter for a vacuum cleaner that would suck like five out at the time. So you had like to go in, it would suck them, then you would release it. Go in, suck them, release it. That's it's funny. a very weird concept. Yes, that's very funny. German um, success story, I would say. <laughs> I want to ask. What, shout what out they, to Hanno VR. I was going to ask what their name is, or we should give them a shout out. Um, the name is somewhere in the video. I think it's in like, the beginning. If yeah? you scroll, <laughs> let's get, get let's get their logo in there. Wait, 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 wait. Path Bender. Uh, no, one frame back. One frame. Path Path yes, Bender. Yeah, it's I think it's Path Bender dot de. Yeah, there it is. Yes. Yes, fastbender.de is what they are. And I met them at the Hanno VR meetup. It's a community meetup in Hanover for VR enthusiasts. Cool. Yeah, well. crazy stuff. Uh, not expecting this to be in everyone's home, but it's working. Awesome. Um, <laughs> okay, next short story. Uh, the next short story, if you want to call it that. You uh, send me a picture of this. Yeah, this is a very short story. What is oh, this? Yes. Uh, I would describe what are we it. looking it's a at? box yes. with... Okay, so so it's a box with a fan and cartridges inside, and you synchronize it with your 360 video. So whenever you see a C, it sprays a C smell. Whenever you see, uh, the, I don't know, the sky, it sprays a sky smell, and so on and so on. It costs like over 3K. The cartridges are super expensive. For marketing reasons, it might be good. I just wanted to say I don't believe in this technology whatsoever. The smell did not add any immersion, and I'm, you, you know, <laughs> wait, there are wait, cases wait. for cinema, it's super, but I would don't want to have this at home. So I don't see VR developing in that direction in the personal usage. That's fair. That's fair. Um, do you... And it smelled kind of bad. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't knock it entirely because, I mean... No, I not entirely. But It's another level of immersion, right? It is, but I didn't feel more immersed. <laughs> I don't know. But that's just me and my personal view. I just wanted to give a small rant. I've, I've tried Many a few... people like it out. I've tried a few different smellometers, let's call them. Yeah. Um, yeah, and? just random things here and there. There was a there was a Japanese demo that I tried at SVVR hmm. in 2017. Yeah, this year, where it was they had four smells. It was, <laughs> let me go through them. One was chocolate. Then another one was coffee. There might have been one more, and then the last one was your girlfriend or like a like. A, like a Japanese Use doll fantasies. that you <laughs> no not that but like <laughs> it was just like you have to lean into a girl <laughs> and smell her and it was like very it put me it was very off-putting because like it smelled like mm. a perfume and like I guess you can manufacture yeah. it up pretty pretty easily so that aspect of it kind of was very mm. convincing you're like whoa why am I so close to this thing and it's like smelling like a person. okay yes so that I mean that was compelling and and I'm, but you had a very. More. But I'm not. Um, I'm not but saying. But you had a very a interactive experience. Right. This isn't product that you. Three sixty video with smell. Yeah. This. No, not really. No. Plus, these are cartridges you have to load, right? Each one of these. Yes, and they are just. Yeah, and they are very expensive. I can imagine. Well, and they smell weird. Clorama. Yeah. So that's what they're. Ol Ol Olorama. No. Right. Olorama. Yeah. Olorama. Olorama. <laughs> Good luck to the company. I hope you will do well. I don't need one, but maybe people will enjoy it. Okay. I think I need to bring the camera a little bit closer to us. Oh, and we mm. lost our big screen. Yay! We can That's that. okay. Um, I can already start the, the next short story. We just will show you a part of a video that I today recorded live what? at the VR base in Bur. Oh, no, we will do the... Oh, let me, let me pull that up. It's just... Yeah, I just do the video. So, um... I'm right now in the VR base in Berlin, which is uh, some kind of hub for innovation and other things. And uh, there is a hackathon slash uh, game jam that is focused on, well, creation. Creation in VR, and it's actually supported and present by the Oculus Medium team. So there are like three people from Medium, Oculus Medium, That's cool. here in Berlin. They came extra here. They hand-selected the hackers or the participants. Wait, 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 that, that is I, you. That, that is him. Yes. That's this beautiful face. Yes. Not that one. Yes. The other bearded one. Ah, okay, yes. 
Yes. Anyway, continue. <laughs> exactly. I, don't, I didn't mean to um, and stop you. Yeah, no, no, it's fine. I was just confused. Who, who is who? Oh my gosh, I'm losing uh, my self awareness. But the video quickly shows, and I'm there with Sarah Lisa, who organized it and who's you know in charge of the Berlin base. Um, very quickly, quick pitches what the guys and girls are all working on, and it's very interesting just to see a different approach to VR. It's not so geeky in terms of hardware and stuff, but they're really creating art or creating assets and having a lot of fun. And I would say. If you, you know, want to see what happened here, check the video, we will link to it, or check it in our video. So we have a video in the video that I did today live, and now I'm live podcasting about the videos that are live podcasted. Whatever. It's just uh, quite impressive. Nice. So it's all art, kind of, yeah. it's art-focused hackathons? It's, yes, pre pretty much, because medium is mostly art, right? Well, yeah. <laughs> And that and so, 3D assets. <laughs> there is a dog. I interviewed the dog regards oh. VR, but he didn't answer me his uh, magic It's um, nice to have a puppy. Secret. Cool. Yeah, yeah, if you guys are in Berlin, you guys should do totally be dropping by VR base. And yeah. well, he he, it's you're awesome not place. based out of there every day, but you'll you're around. So. No, I'm just here for a secret project. That's right. Our European fans can go visit Peter. American fans can come visit me. Oz, I, we we didn't even exactly. make introductions. I'm sorry, guys. We were really off off our game this morning. I'm Oz Balabanian. This is Peter Lekoff. Oh, true. We've... And this is the Research VR <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Yeah, I finally. <laughs> it's kind of a late morning. It's never too us. late. That's right. Yes. Um, another quick okay, thing. I'll be in so... Actually, I'll be in Copenhagen in oh. like a two Whoa. two weeks. When? In two weeks for Copenx. It's a conference. Right. Copenx. What is it? <laughs> Copenx. <laughs> it's, it's a conference <laughs> around. <laughs> it's around um, <laughs> startups. <laughs> And about VR and and I think I'm gonna be talking, <laughs> talking about some some things there. It sounds like a very distinct <laughs> conference from some it other is, conferences. It, I, it popped into my feed late last minute, and, and, okay. and I'm excited to go visit my good VR friends there. All right, let's let's nice. stop this hackathon. Oh no! Yeah, this camera. <laughs> the bane of my. Experience. So the next story is also very short, and I just want to give you a thought. Uh, experiment or kind of a thought that I had watching it. So I was arguing with people on the internet. I usually don't do it, but I was in a bad mood and I was on the internet arguing with people about VR. And I came across this video that has nothing to do with the argumentation, but it came out of anger. So maybe it influenced my thoughts. Yes? Is this right? No. no? Oh, yes. Okay, then. Yes. 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 That's, that's, that's perfect. So <laughs> um, when you have a leap motion, you usually would program an application that uses the potential of leap motion in using all your fingers. You know, all those weird pinching movements, whatever, like whatever you use from the leap motion demos, you use the fingers a lot and hand tracking in addition. What those guys or this guy, actually not even sure who they are, but we'll link to it and I hope that we will reach more than 1,600 views, did is they used the hand tracking potential of the leap motion, but instead of using finger gestures, they took a normal Bluetooth controller that had, does not have positional tracking and p mapped the buttons from the Bluetooth controller to a virtual Vive controller. So they basically can interact with Vive games without having a Vive controller, but by simulating the positional tracking of the Vive controller by the hand tracking of the leap motion and the button presses by this dummy uh, Bluetooth controller. And in somewhere in the video, he also goes on that you can do the body tracking with a Kinect. So you can use the body tracking of a Kinect and you don't need a lighthouse system at all when you don't have the budget, but you suddenly found a Vive on the floor somewhere to play Vive games. But to me, this is very interesting regards. You don't necessarily need to use the full potential of a device like Leap Motion, like the finger tracking is not necessary here. It's more important to use the hand tracking and combine it with something. And maybe we just always are too stuck to, you know, do something perfect and, you know, just get the full potential out of the device, whether sometimes maybe the half of the potential is already good enough, and then we can, we don't need to figure out how the other half is, should suck less, but substitute it by something better. So just a thought experiment that I think <laughs> the VR community should consider. But yeah. I think, Peter, I'm going to cut you. I think yeah. the takeaway here yes. is that leap motion can be used as a form of inside out tracking for other things. Yes. Would that be accurate? Yes. Okay, I'll, let me rewind because I want to, I want to show, I want to show a few frames. Um, so yeah, essentially, you're you're talking about the pinch and gestures where you don't yes. really need to do like the leap motion. No, nope. um, pinching nope. it's more about pressing the the, th the pressing where your fingers would be on the controllers. Um, say if you had a Vive controller. Mm, no, it's actually 
pushing physical buttons on the physical controller uh, you have right. in your hand. Let's look at that. So right here, exactly. this took me a while to yes. notice too, is that in it's, there, it's strange because there's it's actually, black and white video. yeah, that black and white video is actually the leap motion kind of video output. Yes. And, and here's bigger. the controller. Can people see that in the shot? Let's see. Yes, they can. Um, huh. right there, there's a le there's what is he holding? A stem? It's I don't think it's even stem. It's some kind of cheap Bluetooth controller, I would assume. Right. Something so, that has no other options than buttons. So some kind of a Bluetooth control controller yeah. that um you could use, and then with a leap motion that now becomes a six off controller. Um, this is the way kind yes. of mixed reality Windows mixed reality headsets are working as well. They yes. have inside out tracking exactly. for the controllers. So it's I mean it's a it's a proven principle. Um, curious to yes. see if this oh here's where this makes sense, Peter, and why it's not just the thought experiment. Yeah. This could make sense for mobile for mobile games. Oh, with, you know like gear daydream what and whatnot where they have yes. very limited controllers currently and having cameras actually tracking them would would make a big difference. yeah i mean elite motion is not expensive and you know leap is already getting integrated into qualcomm's um yes. design where it comes into to... qualcomm's mm -hmm. oh i didn't know that that's impressive mm -hmm. Me, uh, leap motion has actually shown off their what Oh man, it was on another episode of Research VR when I was doing it live, silly. You should have been, you should have paid attention. <laughs> let me, let me no, 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 no. I know uh, that they wanted to integrate it inside other devices. I didn't know that it was Qualcomm. I know that they got 50 million funding, but the they Qualcomm did. part no, uh, no, 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 no. Qualcomm did. I don't think Qualcomm um, invested in them, but this is what no, I No, mean. it's not Qualcomm. Let's go back. Whoa, like, so this is what we're talking about. <sighs> It's a standalone Qualcomm mm -hmm. uh, headset thingy, right? So that and they have the Leap Motion integrated. Wow. Yeah, I'm, I even have a video of it. I can't find it, but essentially, oh. yeah, in the front they had a yeah, um, mobile. Yes, wide angle stuff. Mobile. I can't spell when I'm live. Oops. My nose is itching. I know. <laughs> just, just random thoughts we have in our heads. This is it. This is it. Yes. Okay. Is this one I saw? Yes. So that could work really well. Yeah. I never tried it. Yeah. I don't really want to try it. Oh, I, I've one tried day. it. They're, I don't think they sell it. Their FOV. No, they don't sell it. Their FOV is like super. It's 130, right? Super wide. Like you can like go like this yeah. and it still works. Um, so that's fascinating. I mean, I'm sincerely impressed by the Leap Motion Company because I bought the sensor. I got it actually for free the moment they launched as a developer and it was so bad. And it's still the same day, it's the same sensor, but the software improved so much. Yeah, they did. That so actually became useful. This is and a different sensor, like, wow. however. This is this is new. Yeah, sure. That's I mean, this is an improvement, but I kind of trust them, you know, still being what is this? This is yeah, this, this is this is what it actually is. I think this is a mobile Ooh. version. If I dive, actually, if I find a YouTube video of um, we had a guest on the show. Um, from Leap Motion, and they were yeah. showing off their Vive attachment, which was like their new sensor. It was actually, I think, it was one like one of the first times oh. that they've ever shown that off in public. Um, Whoa! Yeah, Martin Schubert was our guest. Let me find it. Martin. Yeah, I should maybe focus more on the video we are doing and not just audio. Mm -hmm. There it is, architectural design. All right, oh, yeah. let's let me just go dive through. That's me. <laughs> That's you in a corner. Uh, wait, wait, I want to show it. Look at this. Look at this. I found it. Oh. Yeah, pretty epic, isn't it? Yeah, it even has the original leap mount. Ha. Huh. Yeah, exactly. Like, so, you know, this is typical stuff that they used to have. But, uh, oh. I mean, it's an ultra-wide looking sensor compared to what they had originally. It looks like it's kind of just ret yeah, retrofitted on top. Mm -hmm. So. Well, I really want to see new products for them. Okay. Should we dive into so, our main topic motion, of the week? Yeah, I would say yeah. About mobile because AR. all the topics we discussed are kind of going there. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So Apple, so, yeah, as leading that way, most people have heard. I'm gonna move this out of there. Um, but like most people have seen, Apple has been um, pushing their AR kit pretty heavily for mm -hmm. iOS 11. 
And that's really, really important because um, it's now bringing in... My, my main argument is that app, since there are so many Apple developers, Swift developers, uh, people that have just yes. dealt with mobile, mobile phone apps before, um, the scale of developers is huge. Um, so it's going to make a big difference in terms of the output of VR and AR apps that are coming in the next year. Um, I was listening uh, to one of the Apple or Android podcasts that I subscribed to, and they had a good point. So technically, the Tango platform from Google is, from the technological perspective, way more sophisticated. However, Google announced the Tango platform, Tango, and the developers went out of the room without a phone and without the software. Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Apple announces an ARKit, and anyone who is a developer can flash their new phone that they already have to the new iOS 11, and they have a device to develop this. You know, till now, it was for Tango super difficult to get it. And honestly, no one kind of believes that Google is really committed to it. And regards the iRKit, if you read the numbers, there are potentially 360 million devices out there right now that can support it. And right. From what I tested it on the Heno VR once again, uh, with the iPad Pro and an iPhone 6, I think, or 6S, I don't remember, it was stable. Like, it obviously doesn't give you the mesh reconstruction, but it was very, very stable, and it's very impressive. And it's definitely, you know, something that a lot of people have been dreaming about. Not that I consider it true AR or true mixed reality, like it's, it should be completely, but it definitely is way ahead of the game through the you know, big amount of people talking about it, like because it's Apple and Apple stock and whatever is super important, it brings the interest of people way back. But it also triggers a lot of those posts and a lot of those opinions. AR will kill VR, man. Yeah, I mean, it, it's Would certainly a step. <laughs> it's, that, it's certainly a step into actually making these apps something that most mainstream public could use. VR obviously is a very... Um, a power user thing currently but but when it's something based off your phone oh i'm holding up my phone you, you can't see you can't see it in vr I'm holding up when i have a phone uh integration where literally anyone like you said can walk out of the room after hearing about it and actually download something and try it out um it makes a big difference uh we have a few notable yeah. things i want to show that i've just seen in the past couple of days i've myself have been experimenting with it as well um this is something i saw this morning um Someone so made a, a person... hand painting app yes. where he the, the phone is actually tracking his fingers and that plane is actually the kind of the, the plane tracking that happens when it detects a uh, plane, obviously. <laughs> and yeah. uh, but but the it's kind of incredible how it's tracking the fingers so well and then check that out. And then yes. you can pull it out of the phone. Yes, and it becomes three D. So he literally <laughs> put neat. his fingers, two fingers together, drew with it. And then he basically pulled them up and it created a 3D shape. Right. I mean, so would you use this every driving. day? Would you use this for your notes every day? Who knows? I, maybe, uh -huh. maybe not. But the fact that it is works this well and actually, like, there's no leap motion on the iPhone. This is on an iPhone 7 Plus. Like, yeah. there's yeah. none of that. And it's actually doing precise finger tracking. I think that opens up a lot of doors that I don't really know exactly where yes. it's going to go. Um, this is some... I have a vision. Okay, what, what is your vision? So I was, till the moment, uh, you know, I had my N900. This is uh, the big laugh with styluses. However, a piece of plastic or even the Apple Pencil, you know, you're kind of still drawing on a screen. Now imagine you would have, through augmented reality, a very precise stylus, but you also would augment your real notes that you take as a real pen, or you would augment the screen of a surface, for example, right? Or an iPad Pro with information that kind of goes out of it. So you could arrange your ideas finally, not 2D, right? Mm -hmm. So mind map in 3D or presenting data in 3D, doing notes, arranging photos, like the cases still have to be figured out, but that basically takes off the flatness of notes. Because notes are usually flat, even if you have a screen like the Apple Pencil uh, stuff for the Surface, it's still mm -hmm. flat. You know? So you mean in terms like of you like can do, you arranging know, and organizing your notes based on... Yes, yes, like arranging, your... organizing, and also lifting them to the third dimension whenever it makes sense. So the question really is, is like, okay, these are apps. This is, this is what I had made this week. Why does it keep making the sound? Um, where 
I had scanned this location and then, you know, processed Wait. it with photogrammetry and then overlaid it. Looks it. Real. it does look real. Um, wait, 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 wait. Is this your garden? This is, yeah, this is my backyard. And then so there's that... a model in your garden. Yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like, w before you came close to the gap where it started, they kind of had. In, yeah, yeah, exactly. It looks when like, you just stop here, it kind of just looks like from it's the part quality, of... it's so shitty, like <laughs> in terms of pixels, that I don't see the difference. Right. It looks to me like you really have a small park there. All right. Wow. Which is pretty neat, right? Like it looks really cool on an iPhone. Absolutely. The the question I was making is that I want to see what Apple Apple's first party apps are actually going to integrate. Yeah. Can you come a little closer to That's me. I think question. we're we're a little too far. We need to we need to keep the yes absolutely keep the love a little absolutely. bit absolutely absolutely. I'm moving. I I'm moving. To I'm moving. I'm moving. What's up? <laughs> okay, great. Um, so much love in here. Oh, no. Yes, absolutely. The R is no, just full of no. This is what happens when I try and get close and comfortable with someone is the camera keeps getting stuck. Yeah, it's okay. It's, uh, okay. it's okay. Early days, early oh, days. Yes. Uh, yeah, that's for sure. I mean, we are developing, but also the fact that you see more and more devices trying to combine IR and VR and basically allowing you to switch between those modes. And the fact that you don't necessarily always want to have your surrounding around you, or you sometimes want to have things in the place where you would place them. So, I mean, the question is, will Apple basically have any meaningful case that they can present except oh you have your furniture because what you just yeah but they're not awesome. going to make that app like they're not going to make the app furniture designing app right like don't you what... think they should at least you know like they did with the iphone they kind of show the way to go don't they need to do it with augmented reality well they are I it just i'm just the point i'm trying to i'm trying to make is that those apps that we all think are going to be really cool with ar kit and iphone are not actually like those they're putting it out there for developers to make this type of stuff and then Absolutely. i'm wondering what are they going to do like with a notes app but augmented reality makes sense in there if it's a phone based app because like there's very limited interactivity you can get with these things at least as far as i've seen on exactly. an iphone um although i i would actually put my bet on the fact that they combine this uh, air kit with making photos and videos because they really go for this creative part. Not so much for the software, doing something useful, productive, in a sense, we discussed, but rather <laughs> making your photo making uh, abilities better. So let's say it kind of scans the surfaces and you can very easily hide something. Hmm. Or, That's a good point. I don't know, it kind of puts rockets around you. I don't know. That's a very good point. I think rather the creative part. So rather than actually highlighting the, the, tech, the technology itself, it probably Rocket will be meant. But it probably will be manifested really good. in a sense that, like, yes, yeah. it's a very integrated or, or like uh, a seamless part of the yeah. app where it's like, oh, suddenly it does magic where it like removes a part, a, something in your scene and, and replaces it. This would be it. Apple style. Yeah, yeah well, that would be just a better way of integrating this tech than like really pointing to it. This is a, and this then is the hallway. ultimate question is, it's fucking gorgeous. <laughs> is that cool? I'm sorry for swearing, but it looks absolutely, I know, surreal. Because first of all, the scanning process is so good, and then it kind of blends very nicely. And so it doesn't look like those bulky models you would usually have with IR. I just realized. But then also, our... there we go. Will Apple will Apple actually go for the VR part with the iPhone? Because they want to do something Maybe. similar to Daydream. I think. I think because they the phone can. will be capable. They totally can now. I mean, hardware-wise, they will be capable of it completely. Yeah. Six sure. off for they sure. They can partner up with someone. With, I mean, with the newest phones, I think you'll be able to do it, but I don't know if they'd want to um, want to push such a premium mm. feature on only the latest two phones, yeah. like just the 7, the 7 Plus, and the 8 that's coming out. So maybe, but I think you totally can do it. I've seen, we've, we've seen companies actually integrate that already yeah, um, sure, with sure, 6 off sure. tracking. So that's, that's really exciting. I have a dream. <laughs> I have a dream. I have a dream. I have a dream of a device. Okay. Dream. Yes, I have a dream of a device. Let's imagine some kind of headset. Doesn't matter how it looks like, but you literally take your phone and you put it in. But that's not where the magic begins. The magic begins with the fact that the phone has not just one micro USB plug, but actually one HDMI in. So the headset has an external GPU that connects through the micro USB C, whatever, and the phone uses a more powerful GPU 
of this device I have on my head, the picture going back to the phone through the HDMI cable, or whatever they have in mind, there is an additional battery somewhere on the back of my head that leverages all this huge, <laughs> enormous device. It has like, I mean, it doesn't have to be a 1080 on my head, yeah, but something more powerful than an average processor. I've been re reading uh, a lot of Wikipedia lately just to understand the power in terms of uh, giga hashes, mega hashes, and uh, whatever of my S8 compared to a 1080. So how mm. to compare them and stuff. I'm pretty sure that the difference is enormous and you can definitely put a Tegra, which will be still more powerful than the processor. I guess it should be more powerful than the one in the um, S8 I have in some kind of does headset. S... basically use external GPU. Does the S8 run the... on uh, the Qualcomm 3 or 835 chip? Mm, they have two chips. They have uh, okay. one that is Qualcomm and one that is this Inx, Inx, I don't know how to pronounce it, the Samsung chip. Okay. They're just two uh, different versions. Just, yes, for the European market and the other market, but the GPU performance is very similar. Mm. But I have no daydream support. I have daydream support That's on my right. S8. That it is works. really exciting. It's, yeah, but I want some kind of fancy device. And then the best case would be if it would have fancy cameras that would connect to the phone, and then I could use also as a mandatory device. Um, it's and maybe a plug to my brain. I think in terms of the connection that you're talking about and in terms of uh, not just a VR, a mobile phone and a mobile headset being a one directional thing, uh, I think that that's definitely yes. going to be true. And if I'm not mistaken, I think that when? your VR has some kind of internal. Um... Okay, maybe let's. let's... It has unfortunately only sensors. I took it apart right. a few times. It has only tracking, it has it. no calculation or whatever. But eventually, when you do, and and this Nvidia going back to the Nvidia SIGGRAPH talk, they talk yes. a lot about breaking up the the processing per um, device. So everything that has to do with um, three DOF, six DOF, and pixel kind of rendering should be done closer to the eye, where you have. Mm -hmm. and, and he was even suggesting pushing out like. Uh, things that don't need it need to be updated every frame. So in terms of like lighting, can be even pushed not just to an external GPU like your phone or your computer. Or he was even suggesting the cloud for slower rendering things and everything that needs to be you know up to date at night at least ninety frames a second uh, can be done locally. So I think yeah, you're right. There's going to be definitely the direction with like these the mobile headsets are going to go into a bi-directional state where your phone is feeding. Yeah. Um, thanks to your headset, and your headset is sending back some of the processing to your phone. Um, and whether the, the battery lies in your head... Do you think those head, devices I, will survive? Hmm? Will they survive? Do you think those devices will... Because, wait, let me rephrase the question. Will they survive in terms of that there will be still a high demand for them, that they will be produced, uh, or will the AR kit, you know, convince the average user that he doesn't need VR and he will just, you know... Be happy with his Snapchat. No, I mean, it's. I don't think they're going to be such separate things. Like, <laughs> you, and you don't want to. Se it's already such a segmented and small idea yeah, I agree. market. There's not going to want to be Just this asking. like battle of. Um, no, I think they're going to. The, the answer to your question would be like they enable, they both enable the same end result. And it's kind of the, each, mm -hmm. each company's kind of have going to have their own strategy going into it because I know is your nose itching too in these in these headsets? Yeah, yes. Mine is, I keep, we keep it's scratching ridiculous. our noses. Are you wearing a rift? Yeah. Yes. It's Daniel <laughs> right. Rift. Quick tangent. It's a rift that Daniel from Realities was wearing. Thank you very much for it. It's Quick tangent. Pleasant. I don't know how um, Oculus did, did this, but there's a fabric that's like in between your lenses in a rift. Yes. And that stretching, yeah. fabric is kind of like this, not uh, not Velcro, but it's a, kind of like spandex. But if when you have some wear and tear on that thing, you have little microfibers that stick out and they freaking tickle your nose. <gasps> and so that's what's happening. Is that what happens? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's really annoying. That explains a lot. <laughs> I just saw some kind of allergic reaction. Whoa. No, it's not. It's definitely not allergies. It's just... Uh, the Vive doesn't have it. Vive has a plastic nose cover, which I guess they... <laughs> yeah, it feels, uh, I mean, maybe a little more sweaty, but not as itchy. <laughs> itchy and sweaty is a new VR. <laughs> I just realized you don't know why I'm like, I keep crying. It's because I keep 
grabbing the camera, but you don't see the camera. You don't. Yeah, I, you have no idea. I, I, I believe you that something is happening, and um, you know, it's in a similar way. Let's go to the metaphor. Whenever I see people having a VR headset, but I don't have a VR headset on, and they're dancing weirdly through the room, I believe they have a nice experience. And whenever you move your hands in the air, I also assume it makes some kind of sense for you. Just I don't see it. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Do we have any um, questions? Yeah. Let me ch let me check. Actually, Travis Barker. What's up, Travis? Thanks for helping us out. He actually came in from last week when we had a call out for uh, for people helping us with comments, questions, and moderation. Uh, Mr. DNA suggests that integration with maps, map directions would be good for ARKit. And Ooh. Mr. DNA, you're completely right. We actually have seen someone do a ARKit demo with Google Maps where they integrated um, kind of like a yellow brick road. Or it's not yellow. This it's, it was actually purple, but it's basically it paints the the road purple for you to follow. So, <laughs> um, so <clears throat> yes. yeah, that's. I mean, I think that's probably going to be the 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 first integration that they'll have for, um, talking about first party apps for uh, Apple. Keep going. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm they... just checking the time. Oh, okay, you have to leave. <laughs> the... No, 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 it's, it's fine. I was just checking the time, and the problem is that uh, my sweat or whatever is in my face gets the lenses of Oculus very foggy, milky, but I uh, foggy and milky, but I only notice it in big screen because in big screen, I kind of want to look at my screen and don't shoot at roboters, you know? So it, uh, I always try to, like, I feel like an 80 year old person you sometimes see on a train having two pairs of glasses trying to look at their phone. I'm like the same, you know, trying to make the screen even bigger and bigger, trying to reach this one number. Yeah. Anyway. Sorry. So maps. Um, yeah, ma I think maps will be probably one of the better integrated things um, that Apple will do in terms of their... That might well, be let's, true, let's... although they screwed up maps a few times. Well, I th I'd, I'd say initially in the beginning, but <laughs> they actually already have... Let me, let me look this up. They already have this really cool... Um, let me fix the camera. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. In the meantime, I can make a joke that maybe Andy Rubin with his essential phone will destroy Apple anyway. I'm. That's a whole other conversation. I'm curious as to why people are jumping into the... I wouldn't laugh at it. I think there's definitely... There's probably some strategy behind uh, the jump into it. No, what he suggested is very good. Here. Oh, no. I just don't see him deliver. Yeah, they are, they did miss... Uh, they did totally miss their... Um, I know, I know. Their date. Will it be Daydream? Did he have a told anyone no. that it will be Daydream support? If I, I can't see. Um... Actually, edited the first time my Wikipedia. I was editing the Daydream page, adding phones that were missing. My officially, <laughs> oh, Wikipedia really? editor. Yeah, it was my first time. <laughs> oh, God. Sorry, guys. Give me a second here. Um... Oh, I see myself. I just don't know how to grab the screen without grabbing the camera I have to like lean in the meantime it's okay in the meantime i can maybe a little bit explain you the process of publishing podcasts and stuff so we are um building up a pipeline that would allow us to stream it like we do it right now and very right. quickly afterwards push it out and, and, and um, so far it's very wonderful so far we didn't need it because we usually pre-recorded things Mm -hmm. And we just need to establish this pipeline that works very nicely and you know, we can invite guests and other things. And we are, you know, moving towards becoming the best VR podcast out there. <laughs> we are moving towards. What do you mean moving towards? We are. <laughs> yeah, we are. Yeah. Well, I mean, no. I'm pretty sure there is some kind of Korean podcast that copies us one to one. And that's <laughs> well, the point of our podcast is, <laughs> I mean, we can make. Research VR, one of the more mainstream VR podcasts, but I think the point of it okay. is to kind of talk a little bit more, like deeper into mm. how some of this works, rather than uh, just covering the news. We we want to cover the interesting scientific aspects and bring you like the cognitive science um, perspective. But are you are you raising your hand? The talking? Yes. No. Yes. Yes. I'm kind of raising my hand yeah. so I don't introduce you, uh, interrupt you. We have a lot of listenings and no one complains. That means what we are doing is good. Or they are all fake. So when you don't complain, we just keep on going like we like. So That's give right. us good feedback or constructive feedback. Mr. DNA. So we look at a video. This is this is one of the more basic ones where like you can just kind of look around and it puts 
pins exactly on things. Cool. This is really cool. I think this, you know, if you're walking down a street and you're, you're looking for shops to eat, it's yeah. going to exactly yeah, highlight absolutely. it for you. Absolutely, I love it. Um, where's one? There's one where he's actually walking down the street. Oh, I like that. Yeah, what, what you see is you basically view through the camera the street and into the street it draws above the ground a line that you need to follow with additional errors showing you or, or error, errors showing you the direction. Errors. Yeah. yeah, that's really it's really neat. I think so that doesn't look bad. Andrew Hart for the beginning. One. Yep. Nice. Um so yeah, I think this this could probably will get integrated. Oh, actually, into I have a Apple question. Maps. I have a question. Mm -hmm. So this Andrew uh, video was outside. I never tried ARKit. I didn't thought about it. How does ARKit perform on the street? Like ARKit works. Okay, five, six. Dude, it's rooms. a multi-room. Okay, but... I don't know. I I mean, I haven't tested how far. But if you I walk through walk the city, it. yeah. If I start to walk through the city, I'm sure GPS uh... will have a big part, big. Role and, and True. actually yeah. keeping things. That centered. was my point. I was trying recently explain someone how uh, they might have done the magic, and I just try I was starting list, listening, uh, listening, uh, listening. I was reading the list through all the sensors. So, for example, if you lower it down or get it up, it most likely also uses a barometer for that. So it mm -hmm. kind of knows where the ground is by kind of estimating that. When you have GPS signal, it obviously can use it too. It can use Wi-Fi triangulation, Bluetooth triangulation, all kind of things, and then merge them through um, multi-step modeling into all kind of weird models in behind. So they kind of must have squeezed every part of the data, built models for that, integrated them, built models out of the integration part, and kind of integrated even further. Whenever you're different cases, it kind of can utilize different data. I mean, it yeah, sounds kind of easy, but it's, I guess, super difficult to build. Well, and with with. Apple, when you know you have like three or four different devices that you're working with rather yeah. than thousands like Android, you can yes. really, it's easy. I guess, take advantage of the onboard uh, sensors. I don't think they're using Absolutely. doing anything with barometers. Um, it's it's why not? So if you get the info how high the phone is. Maybe I mean I haven't I haven't you seen just that. You just fuse it in your model. I mean they won't tell you, but why not fuse the data into the model if it's not then? Easy? Oh, actually, the point I was trying to make is not the bar a barometer, but uh, the Wi-Fi like triangulation uh, of themselves. Because so uh, the, it the can two actually parts... work. Uh, and I know you can, and I'm sure. But it only works in combination. But only in combination with what? There's like one paper I read where, so. Okay, if you do just Wi-Fi triangulation, it's super inaccurate. Also, if you use just IMUs, it's super inaccurate. Bluetooth triangulation also is kind of very inaccurate. But when you fuse them with models, like step models and other things, then the Wi-Fi itself triangulation adds additional data, even though it's noisy. So it has uh, okay. not just entropy. So it might help them. Who knows? They won't tell us. But If people right. in our audience know exactly how ARKit is working, let us know if we're wrong. Yeah, it would be lovely. There's any engineers, any engineers out there from <laughs> Apple, you don't want to work for that company anyway. A lawsuit is a lot of fun. Leak us the information. Someone on Periscope is, su is suggesting a GTA type game that utilizes maps. Actually, um, that oh, could be yes. cool. Where you're actually walking around your city, and and the game is the sit. Like you don't have to recreate, you know, the city for the game as the city is the game <laughs> but you can have essentially hey, virtual no, characters on yeah. the street that you can go and interact with like definitely yeah, i think that might distract you and it might do an accident but there are cars with those uh, head uh, window screens right hud's oh like huds and if it yeah. pairs with an iphone yeah there are cars coming up with it more and more and i mean well this doesn't well, imply a car i think like walking up but like imagine walking up to an npc yeah. um that's on the street here and 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 you know having a conversation about or starting the quest that way and actually they're on the street i, I wonder yeah. how much of an a idiot checkpoint. you'll look like to most people or they're all just like what the hell is the hell is this guy talking to i wonder how you'll get over that but i want oh, wait 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 I, I want to address this point a lot of people recently were kind of um, uh, excusing themselves in front of me by putting the headset uh, when they were putting the headset on their face and kind of you know not looking at me anymore or doing weird things with the headset. So to me, like look, looking at headsets and VR for so long, kind of very natural. But before that, ten years ago, people were kind of very considered rude using Bluetooth headsets. That was kind of strange. Now VR is kind of strange. Pretty sure people will get used to it very much. The moment the 350 million people out there with the iPhone will do it. It will become common narrative. I'm curious. I'm curious. Accepted. I don't know. I I mean, I hear the point that you're making that like it takes time for 
social structures yeah. to be built around using these crazy new wearable technologies. Um, but I'm, I mean, oh, jeez. Uh, but I, I mean, I'll admit it. I'm, I'm very embarrassed to take out my drone VR goggles uh, when I'm when I'm out about with my drone because it's just like, ugh, I already have a drone, or it's already making a like a bunch of noise. And here I am yeah. sitting with this freaking white headset, just like bang, that yeah, makes okay, all these yeah. noises and sounds. I don't know. I'm just, I think at this point with the, the state of how big these headsets are, it's a little embarrassing still. And, yeah. and, and it makes sense. But I mean, I'm curious to see how yeah. like phone, I mean, holding up a phone to, to, towards someone or towards nothing. I don't think that's that big of a deal um, in terms no. of uh, breaking no, social no, rules. So, but speaking with it. Like people still don't use Siri that much outside. Of well, no, no. Else. Well, it it could look like you're FaceTiming with someone if you're talking into mm. your phone and holding it up like this. Um, I think that's that can be interesting. Okay, true, true. A good point. Let's see. Travis Barker yeah. is asking. Actually, he he's asking me directly. He's like, "What kind of problems will this create? How do we how do we deal with distractions and avoid stepping out in front of a bus or something?" Um, I think the if it's actually mobile phone based, then you're actually looking at your phone, then your periphery, the periphery of your vision still isn't being blocked. Mm. So I guess the the problem of well, walking out to a bus, it's uh, it's the same problem as like people would have with texting uh, and walking. Okay, okay, are you yeah, exploring I me now? Had <laughs> very no, I just had recently a few near death accidents where I just nearly run into someone or a pole because I was trying to text on my phone. It is very distracting. However. Imagine that your phone will become so good that it will detect the dangers for you and will displace it. That that would be nice, actually. Like your phone like would take over your collision. No, 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 your phone can be the collision detection, kind of like driving yeah, in a Tesla. You know, exactly. like it, it it predicts yeah. the things from happening before they do, and it buzzes in your hand. And or actually, it doesn't yeah. even need to do anything that uh, that alert of that much with alert. It can just like redirect you to walk that way, <laughs> and then you miss the whole bus. Mm -hmm. coming. Exactly. So all people will kind of chaotically walk around the city. There will be like no traffic rules, and they all kind of you know like swiggle around. That's right. Among each other. AR kit. AR kit will save the world. That's 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 our conclusion for today. Uh, <laughs> and no. Yeah. But wow. but I'm glad. Okay. We, so we covered a good amount of smaller yeah. use cases that we're seeing we did. currently. We did. We're, we made a few predictions about how Apple, I think, will integrate AR kit into their. Um, iOS natively yeah. in terms of their own apps. Uh, we're curious mm -hmm. to see what more can happen actually coming from. Uh, I'm I'm thinking how Facebook, uh, Google, and, and Snapchat will be able to integrate them the AR kit into their apps. I don't know if they will. Mm -hmm. Maybe I think Facebook will probably use their own um, SDK. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, final predictions knows. we want to hear from you guys. What do you think AR kit will be used for? And and I don't want to just hold keep it down to iPhones. How will Google will use their Google Lens? How will Facebook use their uh, mobile AR platform? Um, we're very curious to see what it means to actually have a phone. I'm holding up my phone again. Don't you see it? How how is this going to work? Holding up your phone and walking around. Um, send us send us some <laughs> of the really cool examples that you've seen. Uh, we want to feature them on our Twitter at Research VR Cast. Exactly. Um, we like having a. You want to get featured right as a good comment. Well, okay, that, it's not a quid pro quo, quid pro quo situation, but uh, <laughs> I'm just, kidding. it would be nice. I just wanted um, to make it. I was kidding. I mean, everyone is used to me. That's <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> the, so yeah, follow us on Twitter at Research VR Cast. Find exactly. us on Facebook at Research VR. Um, I need to start playing the, the outro music, but it's okay. He'll add it in post. Um, find uh, us. Yeah, we'll do it. So research VR Facebook. We have a web page where you can download the podcast, but most importantly, go to iTunes, rate us, and you can also listen to the podcast when you subscribe via the podcast catcher so, of your choice. That's right. If you are listening to this live and or in video form, we do have this as an audio form podcast. Find us on any of the podcast listeners that you listen to on and uh if you can live us give us a thumbs up or a review it would be awesome because we are we doing would this love it. all from our bedrooms and for free for and the thumbs up for we're yes. doing we're doing this for the thumbs up we uh <laughs> i will work for thumbs up here oh what? And here we have a second. <laughs> all right guys thanks so, everybody for joining. how about the music how about um, the music i uh, the music. okay i need to open it up again wait give me a second vlc and uh, i describe right now uh, me as goofy uh, dancing uh, 
dun, dun, dun. Wait, I don't, I'm not playing. I'm very yet. glad that no one snored in the room. Like I was recording today a podcast and there was a guy so much deep in sleep that he was snoring. It's fun. Here we go. <laughs> Look at my face, the sweat.